Hi, I'm Melissa. I'm a Texas Monthly staffer who likes to cook, and I'm using classic Texas Monthly recipes for my take on a Texas dinner party. It's springtime in Texas right now, and so normally my friends and I might do a crawfish boil, but it's been a hard year for crawfish, so I'm going for the next best thing, seafood gumbo. This recipe comes from Lou Lambert's in Port Arthur by way of Courtney Bond, my personal North Star when it comes to Texas cuisine. I personally love gumbo. I make chicken and sausage gumbo all the time, but this recipe has the best roux and base that I've ever cooked, so I'm really excited to do it today. So for our gumbo, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna chop all of our vegetables and measure all of our spices so we're ready to go when the roux is ready, because the last thing we wanna do is burn the roux. I'm gonna start by chopping some onions. We need two and a half cups of chopped onions. Some people's knife skills are really good. Mine are not, but I haven't cut my finger off yet, so I feel pretty good about that. Okay, next is a cup and a half of celery. I like to kind of slice it down the middle before I chop it so that they're a little bit smaller. It's probably about a cup, cup and a half of bell pepper. So I like to kind of cut my bell peppers by just stabbing them down the top and pulling out the little pepper top, slice it open, just sort of like break it like that. Just kind of create these long little fingers. And one bell pepper is about as much as you need but again, I don't think it really matters if you have more or less of any of these ingredients because it's all going in a soup. Next thing is our green onions. And you're gonna cut like a lot of it. It's not just the tops, it's the whole thing. All the way down, probably stop right about there. Let's get all of our spices measured. And like I said, it's too stressful to try and do any of this while you're watching the roux. I've done it before and I've burnt the roux and I ruined the roux and I had to throw everything out and I could not save it. So we're not doing that today. So I'm just gonna measure them all into one thing and create a blend. And this is where the printout comes in super handy because there's a lot of spices and it's gonna take a lot for me not to mess this up. So two bay leaves, half a teaspoon of white pepper, half a teaspoon of thyme, half a teaspoon of dried oregano, an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne, a pinch of ground clove. Sounds kind of surprising. I had to buy cloves for this because I don't use cloves that often. Let's do a little pinch, maybe two. Old Bay, most important one. Two big fat tablespoons of Old Bay. I think that's everything. Ah salt and two. Okay, great. Last prep thing we're gonna do is we are going to chop or mince our garlic. The best way to mince garlic is to kind of treat it like an onion where you cut it like crossways and then you slice it like this and then you mince it. Little baby garlic. Okay, so guys, here are all of our seasonings and our aromatics and everything. And now we're going to start the roux. Let's get a pot going. So our roux is going to call for three quarter cup of vegetable oil and a cup of all purpose flour. And if you haven't made a roux before, it's super easy. Like I said, you just don't wanna burn it. So, I need this, sorry. <laughs> So three quarter cup of vegetable oil, measure it out, a cup of all purpose flour. And it's gonna make like this pasty kind of mixture. And it will get a little bit more brown the longer it cooks. And you're going for like a peanut butter, almost milk chocolate, but not quite milk chocolate consistency. And if it's starting to get too brown, you can always add a little bit more fat. If it's too thin, if it's too like liquidy, you can always add more flour. But when I tested this recipe, it was perfect. While the roux is starting to bubble and get brown, we're gonna get the stock warming. You can use shrimp stock or chicken stock. So it calls for six cups. We're gonna get it on a medium heat just to start warming it. 
And eventually we're gonna add everything into the stock and that's how the soup is gonna come together. Now you've got about half hour, 20 minutes to kill. Normally in the dinner menu, this is where I would make the cornbread recipe that we're gonna have with it, but that's a separate video. So you can, you know, go watch that and figure that out later. But this is, you know, this is where the time that would happen. The roux is almost ready. You can see it's like this very dark peanut butter color. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat down super low. Um, I have a couple burnt spots, but that's okay. I mean, as long as you didn't burn it all, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna just have a nice depth of flavor. Once that's done, just all of the vegetables just go in. And that's gonna help stop your roux from cooking because it's gonna introduce a lot of moisture. So your peppers, your onions, your celery, all that goes in. You're gonna do half of your green onions. You're gonna reserve the other half for later. So don't mess that up. Um, and you're gonna stir everything till it becomes this like sticky paste. And basically what you want to have happen is for all your vegetables to sweat down and a lot of the water to come out and that'll help kind of deglaze the pan a little bit. I mean, that's looking perfect. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our spices in. We're gonna add the garlic in. I did not add black pepper earlier when I was supposed to. So if you haven't, like me, do a big, generous crank of black pepper. And then we're just gonna let that go for less than five minutes. One minute. I'm gonna do it for one minute. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the heat on our vegetables and we're just gonna slowly spoon them in to our stock. Now, if you were doing a chicken and sausage gumbo, you would put your chicken and brown sausage in here and it could simmer for half an hour, maybe more, and it would be fine. The thing about seafood gumbo is, is you don't wanna overcook your seafood. So uh, if you are trying to time your cooking, so when your guests are arrived or when everything's ready, this is the part that can go longer or shorter. This is your flex time. You can, once you put the seafood in, it's like time to serve. So just make sure you think about that um, as you are sort of timing out when everyone's coming over and when you're gonna eat. So once all your mixture is in, you just stir it and let it continue to simmer. It needs to simmer for probably at least 20, 25 minutes at a low simmer for it to start to thicken and you could probably let it go for longer if you need more time. So I'm just gonna let it hang out. So while I'm waiting for it to come to a simmer, I pre-cooked all of my rice, so I'm gonna go microwave it and get it ready. So the soup's pretty much ready to go. Um, we're at the final step. If you do get any sort of um, foam across the top, you can always kind of skim it out and just sort of um, remove it. The very final step should happen right before serving. So I'm gonna go ahead and prepare by getting um, just a big handful of parsley and rough chop it. And we're gonna put this in with the remaining green onions and the seafood. And we're just gonna do the seafood one by one, making sure that our simmer is low and gentle so we don't overcook. Parsley going in. And then we're gonna start with the shrimp and we're just gonna kind of put it all in. And we're gonna let that go for about three minutes. You can kind of tell by the color of the shrimp um, when it's ready. Um, it'll turn from sort of that translucent color to more of a pink white color. Um, so that's sort of something you can pay attention to. All right, the next thing is I'm gonna put in the oysters and all those juices, everything goes in. Okay, so we are at the very final step, which is just putting in the crab meat. All goes in. Don't let this go for more than 10 minutes or so before it's time to serve. Keep it on a low heat. And I'm gonna go ahead and get the label, the ladle, so we can get this served up for our friends. Okay. Cute. Wipe up. A little parsley on top. I like to shake a little filet because I feel like that's pretty classic. But that is it. That is the seafood gumbo from Texas Monthly. Yeah. Ooh. That smells 
heavenly. Um, I hope you like it. Hold on, got a little secret. Uh-oh. Uh, Tabasco. Oh! <laughs> um, Perfect. Okay, so this is a seafood gumbo with shrimp, crab, and oysters. And I know you don't like seafood, so you're gonna tell me what you really think. All right. Okay, should we put the Tabasco on first? Uh, it's up to you. It's just if you want more spice. Do you like spice? I think I'm gonna need to, yeah. <laughs> I love a good spice. Thoughts? Do you hate it? I actually don't hate it. Well, um, it doesn't have any fishy flavor, which is crazy. It, it has no fishy flavor. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just pure meat. Yeah. yeah, the flavor is really good. I like it. I'm surprised. That you I kind of like it. Yeah. I kind of did. I kind of did it, guys. Didn't, didn't expect to like it, but you did. No. Which yeah. So brave. I am um. so brave. I mean, I'm not trying to butter you up, but oh. this this is. It's restaurant quality, I, like I personally think. Okay, Ooh. okay, I I'll take think. it. Okay. Well, this is my first time eating gumbo. Okay. Um, and I could drink this, mm -hmm. um, what would you call this? The, the broth. The broth, yeah. Yeah. I could drink it. Well, there you have it. This is Texas Monthly's seafood gumbo recipe based on Lou Lambert's and Port Arthur. If you wanna try it, you can go to texasmonthly.com and check out the recipe.